Gaming Bolt presents 15 most expensive games that flopped. The gaming industry is full of amazing success stories, from indie developers who struck it big to AAA projects that actually delivered on expectations. Not every game can be a breakout success though, even with millions of dollars invested in it. And sometimes, even with the biggest budget, there are some titles that just can't hide their own awfulness. Let's take a look at the top 15 most expensive games that flopped in gaming history. Grim Fandango, $3 million. Some say the decline of adventure gaming started with the poor sales of LucasArts' Grim Fandango. Creator Tim Schafer claims the game turned a profit despite shipping 95,000 copies at launch. Actual numbers down the line varied between 100,000 to 500,000 units, but there's no denying that Grim Fandango was a cult classic more than a mainstream success at its time. It may have not had the largest budget at $3 million, but its misfortune was still no joke. Psychonauts, $11.5 million. Speaking of misfortune and Tim Schafer, Double Fine Productions' Psychonauts had an even worse run than Grim Fandango. Despite releasing on multiple platforms at the time, the psychedelic platformer sold less than 100,000 copies at launch. That's with a budget of $11.5 million and a development time of 4.5 years. Uru, Ages Beyond Mist, $12 million. When you look at some of the games on this list, the budget for Uru Age Beyond Mist seems fairly modest. At $12 million, it's not the highest development cost for a Mist game. However, poor returns on the same and trying to live up to the reputation of Mist, the first three games having sold 12 million copies, pretty much doomed Uru Ages Beyond Mist. Brutal Legend, 20 to 25 million dollars. Tim Schafer's RTS meets Guitar Hero Hybrid faced its fair share of development woes, including a lawsuit with Activision with regards to development fees. At the end, Brutal Legend was estimated to have cost $20 to $25 million to develop, but only sold 215,000 copies when it launched in October 2009. Schaefer did reveal later that by February 2011, the game had sold 1.4 million copies, but there was already a feeling of too little, too late by that point. Duke Nukem Forever, $20 to $30 million. Where do we even begin with 3D Realm's Duke Nukem Forever? In development for 15 years, the first-person shooter hopped more engines than Van Diesel in the latest Fast and Furious film. George Broussard reportedly used 20 to 30 million dollars of his own cash to fund the title, which never saw release under the studio's banner. Publisher Take-Two eventually acquired the IP and released Duke Nukem Forever, only to report poorer-than-expected sales with 376,000 units sold in the first month. This is Vegas. 40 to 50 million dollars. Not a whole lot was known about Midway's This Is Vegas, except that following the company's bankruptcy, the IP was sold to Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. It was cancelled after roughly 40 to 50 million dollars was invested in the game. Dai Katana, 44 million dollars. If you thought the eccentricity of George Broussard was a standalone thing in the gaming industry, then you've never heard of Dai Katana. Helmed by John Romero, a man who helped create what is now the modern first-person shooter, Dai Katana was the first game he'd release under his new company Ion Storm since leaving ID Software. What followed were a few dismal years of engine changes, a terrible demo at E3, tons of money poured into the studio by Eidos Interactive to the tune of $44 million, and a terrible game as the result. The Secret World, $50 million. Subscription-based MMOs don't have much scope these days unless they have the name Warcraft attached, and Funcom's The Secret World is no small example. It cost the developer $50 million to make, but ended up selling only 200,000 copies at launch. Darksiders 2, $50 million. Vigil Games' Darksiders 2 was met with positive critical praise when it was released, and roughly 1.5 million copies were sold on previous-gen platforms. Its budget was $50 million, however, and when parent company THQ was already teetering on bankruptcy, this more or less served as the death blow. Shenmue, $70 million. For all the fond memories players may have of Shenmue, the Sega property was pretty much doomed on arrival when it released on the Dreamcast. 
Not only had Sega spent an exorbitant $70 million on its development and marketing, but it ended up selling only 1.2 million copies by 2001, which wasn't enough to turn a profit. Defiance – $80 million Tryon Worlds' Defiance, made in conjunction with Human Head Studios, had an interesting idea as the MMORPG slash shooter tied to the sci-fi TV series of the same name. Did it require $80 million for its budget, especially since it was going to be a free-to-play title? We're not sure, but neither critics nor players caught on to the game. Halo MMO – $90 million the Halo franchise has seen some major successes in its illustrious history, but it's also dotted with plenty of failures. Case in point, the Halo MMO that Ensemble Studios, who developed Halo Wars, worked on under the name Titan, which never released. The project cost a whopping $90 million and was simply cancelled without any formal announcement by Microsoft. Too Human – $100 million Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem is the game that puts Silicon Knights and Dennis Dyack on the map. Though Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes was a good port, it was too human that many of us were looking forward to as the next big exclusive from the developer. Unfortunately, not only was too human involved in controversies regarding Unreal Engine licensing and Dyack's own outbursts against its coverage, but it ate up more than $100 million during its development. APB, All Points Bulletin, $100 million Real Time Worlds had a little project not too long ago called APB, All Points Bulletin. Was it the killer app many hoped it would be? Not quite, but it wasn't terrible either. However, when development costs were upwards of $100 million, things slowly deteriorated for the studio. ET, The Extraterrestrial Atari's ET, The Extraterrestrial a video game so bad with so many excess copies consumers didn't want that they had to be buried in a landfill somewhere in New Mexico. Though there's no hard and fast budget for the game, E.T. still turned out to be expensive for the industry in every single way. Atari's revenue forecast had been cut by 50% in 1982 after its release. A year later and the studio had lost $356 million. E.T. was also credited for contributing to the great video game crash of 1983. In terms of commercial failures in this industry, it just doesn't get worse. And if you like what we're doing, go ahead and click that subscribe button. See you soon.